Greetings to everyone. Welcome back once again to this educational channel. Today we'll be discussing techniques of answering biology paper 3, experiment 9.4, determining the energy value of different food samples. So it is based on exper an experiment in your Form 4 textbook, page 156. Okay, so this experiment is one of many experiments that you need to know to be well prepared for your biology paper 3 test. Okay, it is not the only experiment. And from here, we are also going to learn the techniques of answering so that you can apply the techniques of answering uh, biology paper 3 to any questions that come out in the exam. Uh, but you first of all need to know the procedures for each of the experiments and also the biological principles behind each experiment. All right. So this uh, experiment is being discussed because of a uh, viewer's request. Uh. So let's get started. So firstly, you'll be given a list of apparatus and materials during the biology paper 3 test. And you have to check to see that you have all these apparatus and materials for the experiment. Okay, so number one, distilled water in a plastic bottle. Number two, food samples in plastic bags. All right, so there are three food samples, groundnut, dried fish and dry biscuit. Number three, cotton wool. Huh? So there's a clump of cotton wool that will be given to you. Plasticine. Number four, plasticine. Number five, retort stand with clamp. Number six, thermometer. Number seven, boiling tube. Eight, long needle. Nine, electronic weighing scale. Ten, measuring cylinder. Eleven, Bunsen burner. And twelve, barrier. So here is a sample practical question that's worth 15 marks. However, in this video, we are going to discuss more questions so that you can train yourself to answer all the different types of questions. All right. And then the time allocated is uh, 40 minutes for the practical test. All right. Now let's begin. You are required to carry out an experiment to determine the energy value of three different food samples, which are groundnut, dried fish and dry biscuit. Okay. Now, firstly, when you look at the objective, try and determine the MV and RV. Okay. It's quite easy. So uh, look for the aim. Uh. The aim starts from here to determine or to study or to investigate uh, the energy value of three different food samples, groundnut, dried fish, and dry biscuit, okay? And then from this objective or aim of the experiment, find your MV and RV. Now, firstly, when it says to determine something, that something is going to be the result of your experiment, okay? It's going to be the data, and from the data, you may have to calculate something, uh, like the energy value. So this must be the RV, okay? It's related to the results of the experiment. Okay, or the data that you're going to uh, collect. All right. And then three different food samples. Now, the word different already is a hint here. Huh? So when you say different food samples, that means this is the MV. Huh? The, the different food samples that are used, okay, in order to determine the energy value. Huh? Uh, different is a word that we use for MV, okay, in this case. All right. So food samples are your MV. Huh? And the energy value is your RV. Okay, the energy value of the food samples. Okay, then using the apparatus and materials provided, plan your experiment. The experimental procedure should include the following steps. Method to handle the three variables. So make sure you state how you handle the MV, manipulated variable MV, responding variable RV, and the constant variable or fixed variable uh, CV in your experiment. Okay, precautions to be taken, other steps. Right, so mention at least one precaution. Now, uh, write your procedure below for marks. Okay, uh, so you can try to test yourself and write the procedure. Huh? Then let's look at the answer after that. So here's the answer for the procedure. It may seem long, but the main thing to remember is state state uh, how you handle the constant variable or fixed variable, the responding variables, and the manipulated variable also state at least one precaution all right so in this question no procedures were given you have to write your own procedure that means this type of experiment is called a non-guided experiment all right which you where you have to think about the procedure design the procedure yourself huh? 
But uh, there's another type of question which is called the guided experiment where a procedure may be given. It will be given to you. Okay, so it depends on the question. So you have to remember and uh, memorize the procedures for all the compulsory experiments, uh, for the experiments in the textbook. Okay, in case you are asked to write down the procedure. Okay, let's start here. Number one, a groundnut is weighed using a, an electronic weighing scale and its mass is recorded. Okay, so this is an important step because we need to know the ma mass of the food sample uh, in order to calculate the energy value. Number two, 20 ml of distilled water is measured and poured into a boiling tube. So the 20 ml of the distilled water is your constant variable. So it must be stated. Huh? And then the boiling tube is clamped to a retort stand and a thermometer is inserted into the tube. This is a step. Number four, the initial temperature of the distilled water is recorded. So important to write this in as we need to know the difference huh, between the final temperature, the highest temperature and initial temperature in order to calculate the increase in water temperature. Okay, then we can calculate the energy value. Number five, the groundnut is stuck on a needle which is held upright using plasticine. Number six, a barrier is placed around the apparatus setup. Now, this can also be a precaution. It is to uh, prevent heat loss to the environment so that the heat can be used to um, heat up the water in the boiling tube. Okay, now groundnut is lighted using a Bunsen burner and placed below the boiling tube. Then the water in the boiling tube is stirred slowly. Now, this is a precaution, right? We stir the water so that the heat can be evenly distributed in the water so that the temperature rise is accurate. Okay? Now, however, when you stir the water, you must stir it slowly. Eh? Okay? This is an important uh, word here. Slowly. Because eh? if you stir it too fast and the thermometer clashes with the wall of the boiling tube, you, it will make a clinking sound. Eh? Clink, clink, clink like that. Uh, that's not good because it can break the the bulb uh, of the thermometer, can break the lower part and the mercury can come out. Okay, so stir the water slowly and make sure that you the thermometer doesn't clash with the boiling tube. Uh. So this is a precaution that you can write down, right? Now, nine, its highest temperature is recorded. That means the highest temperature of the water is recorded after the nut has become completely burnt, right? So that is called the... Uh, here I call it the RV2. Huh? So this is the, the data that we need to get in order to find out the increase in water temperature. Okay. So steps 1 to 9 are repeated using dried fish and then dry biscuit. So this is your manipulated variable. Huh? These two. These two items and then the ground nut too. So must be mentioned. Okay. The results are recorded in a the table. Then the energy value for each food sample is calculated by using the following formula. Energy value of food in kilojoules per gram equals to water mass times 4.2 times increase in water temperature divided by the food sample mass or mass of food sample. And the whole value is divided by 1000 to convert the value from the unit from joules to kilojoules. Okay? So the unit here is kilojoules huh? because we divide by a thousand so our energy value uh, the rv3 here is considered the main rv okay which is stated in the objective okay some teachers call it the actual rv uh, whereas your um, highest final temperature of the water is considered the sub rv which we measure in the experiment uh, i call it the sub rv and uh, it may also be some teachers call it the orv operating responding variable okay which is the experimental responding variable okay so from the sub rv here or orv we get the main rv or the actual rv which is the the energy value all right so we have to memorize the formula if possible memorize the formula for energy value now let us discuss how we're going to carry out this experiment and try to imagine it, right? So these are your food samples. Groundnut, dried fish, and dry biscuit. So you may be given only two uh, out of these three samples. Maybe not all, right? But here I'm showing you the results for three food samples. Uh, just a sample of the results, okay? Uh, so maybe you'll be given only food, two food samples uh, because there may, be not, there may not be enough time to carry out the experiment using three food samples. I'm not sure. Huh? So anyway, 
uh, notice that we are using dried fish and dry biscuit. We're using dry food samples because if there's water in them, it's very hard to burn the food sample. All right. Okay, then uh, the first thing you should do is you should carefully weigh and record the mass of each food sample. Now, you're not going to use the whole fish, uh, but rather you may cut off a section or pinch off a section of the fish unless it's a very tiny fish like anchovies, uh, ikan bilis. So if you are taking a bit of it, the sample, you put it, take it out in a whole piece and weigh on the uh, electronic weighing scale. And uh, make sure that it is somewhere, I know the weight is somewhere between 0.6 until 0.5 or 0.6 grams until 1 gram. Don't make it too big a size of the food sample because when it's burnt, it may cause the water in the boiling tube to boil. And when it's boiling, then the temperature of the water cannot rise very high really, because the water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, and the temperature may not go very far beyond the 100 degrees Celsius. So this may lead to some inaccurate uh, answers. So better to choose the mass somewhere between 0 0.5 or 6 to 1 gram, around there. So let's discuss briefly the steps in this experiment, uh, determining energy value of a food sample. Firstly, weigh and record the mass of the food sample. And after that, you also measure and record the initial temperature of the 20 ml of distilled water by using a thermometer. All right, you need to know the initial temperature before you start burning the food sample. Okay, then next you burn the food sample and then the heat will heat up the 20 ml of distilled water. Okay, so the temperature of the water will rise. Uh, then measure the final highest temperature of the distilled water by using the thermometer. So after the food sample has been burnt, now we finish the experiment, we must calculate the, the energy value of the food sample okay, in kilojoules per gram. And we need to know the mass of the food sample, the initial and final temperature, uh, and also the volume of distilled water. Okay, uh, with that we can calculate the energy value of the peanut or whatever food sample we have put. Here is an example of the results that we may obtain. Food sample, groundnut, dried fish, dry biscuit. Uh, three food samples are used here. Or uh, maybe only two, okay, depending on the question. Maybe only two food samples may be given. So mass of food sample here is uh, zero between 0 0.5 grams until 1 gram. Eh? As I said, don't use too big a mass of food sample, which causes the water in the boiling tube to boil. We don't want the water in the boiling tube to boil. Eh? Now, initial temperature of water is 30 degrees Celsius for all. And the final temperature of water after we have burnt the food sample eh, is 73, 50 and 42 degrees Celsius. So, groundnut has the highest final temperature. Eh? And then followed by the dried fish and then the dry biscuit. So increase in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Okay, so this is where the calculation is involved. Huh? Increase in temperature and also energy value of food. Okay, let's discuss these parts. Huh? So increase in temperature is uh, final temperature minus initial temperature. So 73 minus 30 equals to 43. Huh? And then from there we find the energy value of food. So uh, that's equivalent to, for the groundnut, uh, is equals to 20. Now 20 is the uh, mass of the water, okay, that was heated up. So the mass of water is equals to 20 grams because we use 20 ml of water, right? So each ml, 1 ml equals to 1 gram uh, for water. So 20 grams of water times 4.2 this is the specific heat capacity of water It's a constant value right in our formula times the increase in temperature which is 43 divided by uh, 0.58 the mass of the groundnut times uh, the whole value divided by 1000 uh, to convert from joules to kilojoules 
so we get 6.23 right that's the energy value of the groundnut okay and using the same formula for fish huh? okay so this value here is the increase in temperature and this value is the mass of the dried fish huh? okay then anyway you insert the values into the equation and we get energy value of 2.24 and dry biscuit has the smallest uh, or the uh, energy value that is the least which is 1.65 kilojoules per gram all right question b1 carry out the experiment and state the observation for the ground all right so remember observation must have mv rv and reading with units huh? all right the rv is the sub rv that you measure in the experiment okay pause the video write your own observation now remember for groundnut uh, the final highest temperature was 73 degrees celsius huh? okay pause the video write your answer and now let's look at the answer for groundnut the final highest temperature of the distilled water when the groundnut is burnt completely is 73 degrees celsius right so here groundnut is your mv the final highest temperature of the distilled water or just the final temperature of the distilled water uh, is your rv okay uh, when the ground is completely is burned completely and then is 73 degrees celsius so that is the reading plus the units uh, degrees celsius okay now you can also put in brackets the initial temperature of the distilled water is 30 degrees celsius because we noted that uh, we observed that in the experiment okay but the main one is the final one huh? the final uh, temperature question b2 state the inference okay state your inference uh, for your observation uh, in b1 that means another way of putting it is explain your observation in b1 two marks so we know that an inference is a reason or an explanation for the observation why the observation is so why is the reading high or low compared to the others? And then you must include your biological uh, reasons or knowledge. Uh, add it in also. Okay, let's look at the answer. So, firstly, we mentioned that the final temperature of the water after the groundnut is completely burnt is higher. Okay, higher than the rest actually, or is the highest. Anyway, it's high. Huh? And the reason is because more heat energy was released huh? or is released when the groundnut is burnt compared to the other two food samples right so this heat energy was used to heat up the water huh? and that caused the increase in temperature okay the great increase in temperature or the higher increase in temperature so uh, why did groundnut release more heat when it's burnt when it is burnt so because groundnut contains a higher lipid content right than fish or dry biscuit huh? so groundnut has uh, nuts usually have some lipids in them uh, some fats okay uh, so the lipid content is what determines whether more energy heat energy is released or not compared to the rest right because lipid produces a lot of heat energy its energy value is high okay if you look at the pure lipids all right let's look at the next slide to find out huh? now let's revise what you have uh, learned in form 2 okay in the science syllabus about the energy value of food uh, so food contains some basic classes such as carbohydrate protein and fats or lipids these classes of foods produce different quantities of energy when burned and the total amount of energy released when one gram of food is burned completely in the body is called the energy value of the food. So for pure fats or lipids, the energy value is 37 kilojoules per gram. Uh, for pure proteins, it's 17 kilojoules per gram. And carbohydrates, the same, uh, almost the same like proteins. So fats release the most energy, uh, uh, more than twice the energy from compared to proteins and carbohydrates. So a food... Uh, sample that has a lot of fats in it will have 
a higher energy value than one that has less fats in it or less lipids in it. Right. You can also be asked to state the hypothesis for this experiment, right? So what are the components of a hypothesis? MV, okay, RV, and correct relationship. The RV is the main RV. Huh? So use the main or final RV for the hypothesis. In our case, the main, main RV is energy value, okay? Whereas the sub-RV is the final temperature of the distilled water, okay? But we are going to use the main RV for hypothesis, uh, which is the energy value. That's the better option. So um, your MV is, of course, your food sample, right? And then your RV or mean RV is the energy value. Then there are two formats uh, that you can use, okay? Uh, format number one is for factors that can increase or decrease. Uh, so you can write as MV increases or decreases, RV increases, decreases. But this is not suitable for our experiment here, for our hypothesis here. So we use the second format uh, of all the MVs, the specific MV1 has the highest or lowest RV compared to MV2 and MV3. All right. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we must have the relationship, uh, the correct relationship in the hypothesis. Uh. So MV, RV, correct relationship. These are the components of our hypothesis. So pause the video a while and write down your hypothesis. Okay. Right. Now let's look at the, the answer. Now, if you are using... You have, if you have burned three food samples, uh, then your answer will be like this for the hypothesis. Of the three food samples, groundnut has the highest energy value compared to dried fish and dry biscuit. So our MV are the food samples and also we mentioned the names of the food samples like groundnut, dried fish and dry biscuit. Uh. And then the RV is the energy value and the relationship is that groundnut has the highest energy value. Okay. So for three food samples, we use the term highest or maybe lowest. Huh? But if you have only two food samples, then you have to uh, change uh, okay, based on the grammar in English. So of the two food samples, groundnut has the higher energy value compared to dried fish. If two food samples are burnt. Huh? Next question. Based on this experiment, complete the table below for the variables huh? so your manipulated variable there's only one that is the type of food sample and method to handle the variable use the word different huh? use different so use different food samples and then state the give examples huh? so groundnut dried fish and dry biscuit which are burnt huh? keywords that here are use different huh? mv now responding variable better to choose the sub rv the one, the data that you collected from, you measured from the ex, in the experiment. Huh? So it's not the energy value, it is the final temperature of the distilled water. Now, if you write energy value, you got, to men, you got to mention that the method to handle is to calculate the energy value based on a particular formula. Huh? You got to mention that. So, but anyway, the final temperature of the distilled water, this your sub RV, is easier to explain the method to handle it. Okay. So the method to handle is that you must state, uh, measure and record the final temperature of the distilled water, the RV, by using a thermometer, by using an apparatus. Uh, measure and record RV by using a, the, an apparatus. Now, if it, is, uh, if it involves weighing something, then don't write measure. If Let's say you weigh the weight, like in the previous uh, experiment on the on osmosis uh, that we have discussed, okay, we weigh and record the mass, the final mass of the potato strip. Huh? Okay, so if the sub RV involves uh, weighing something, then you have to write weigh and record. Huh? But in this case, it's measure and record because you're measuring the, you're finding out the final temperature of the distilled water. Okay, so measure and record the final temperature of the distilled water by using a thermometer. Now, for the fixed variable, it is the mass of distilled water that was used and we fixed the mass of the distilled water at 20 grams so we must mention the the value uh, for the fixed variable or constant variable always state the value involved okay or the let's say if you say fix fix the type of plant or something like that you must mention the species huh? so in this case fix the mass of distilled water at 20 grams huh? because we are using 
20 ml of water, which is equivalent to 20 grams. So next question, you could be asked to construct a table and record all the data collected from this experiment, right? So in this case, your table should have the following titles, food sample, mass of food sample, initial temperature of water, final temperature of water, increase in the temperature of water and energy value of food. This is quite a lot. Huh? But anyway, uh, when you read this in your question, you can straight away write down you know, the units to make sure you don't forget to write down the units together with the titles huh? when you draw the table. So mass of food sample in grams, write the word bracket grams here, one G here. And then initial temperature of water, right in brackets, degrees Celsius. Uh, this one's also degrees Celsius. This one is degrees Celsius. And here they have already stated or fixed for you uh, the energy value of the food must be in kilojoules per gram, not joules per gram, right? Okay, let's look at the table uh, that we have uh, drawn up just now for the results and for the cal uh, to calculate the energy value. Okay, let's have a look at the table. So this is our table showing the data and the calculations, all right? Now, it's the same as the one uh, which i shown you previously, eh? just now a few slides ago. So, um, food sample, groundnut, dried fish, dry biscuit, then the mass of the food sample, must write the grams here, the units here, beside the title. Eh? Okay, and then the initial temperature of water, unit is degrees Celsius, final temperature of water in degrees Celsius, increase in temperature of water in degrees Celsius, and then finally, energy value of food, units are kilojoules per gram. Right, so we've discussed this uh, just now in the one of the slides earlier. Now let's see how to uh, mark the table. Huh? So if you have all the titles here and the units too complete, uh, it's all complete, then you get one tick here. Huh? Could be equivalent to one mark. Huh? And then here, the data, okay, all the MVs here, and then all the data which you uh, collected from the experiment, you measured in the experiment. Uh, so if your data is correct, you get one tick. Could be one mark. Huh? And then these two columns are the calculations, right? And uh, I think it's best if you show the calculation here. You can also double check later whether your calculation is correct or not. Huh? So show the calculation in the table here. Huh? And then uh, give the final result okay, or the final uh, value for the energy value, right? Uh, correct calculation, one tick, uh, could be one mark. Now notice that you must be consistent. Uh, if you have put this uh, value uh, for energy value uh, to two decimal places, then the rest must also be to two decimal places. If you put it to one decimal place, then all must be to one decimal place. Okay, so here I put the, I calculate the energy value to two decimal places. Uh, so, be consistent also for the mass of the food sample. Huh? All are to two decimal places here. Huh? So, you cannot write ground at 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 and then it's on 0 0.75. Okay? So, they must be to the same number of decimal places. Huh? So, 0 0.58, 0 0.75, 0 0.61. That is to two decimal places in this case. Right, next question. E2, huh? using the data in the table... Draw a bar chart to show the energy value of each food sample. Okay, three marks or two marks. So, uh, bar chart, uh, take note, bar chart, and energy value of the food sample. So, energy value is your RV, okay, in kilojoules per gram, and your MV is the food sample. Uh, so, this is on the horizontal axis, uh, the food sample. And then, uh, you draw three bars, and you must label below the bar the food sample, ground nut, dried fish, and dried biscuit, okay? Uh, so, these are the results of our energy value for each food sample. Uh, so, we have to take note of where the points are. Okay. So, make sure your scale is large. And since the reading is from uh, 1.65, this is the lowest reading, to 6.23, that means you make sure that your scale has until the reading of 7, uh, 7 kilojoules per gram. Okay. Right. And then try to use a... Uh, uh, a lot of the graph paper, uh, three quarter, at least three quarter of the space there to draw your graph. So draw a big graph. Now, so the value for the energy, the energy value of the groundnut is 6.23, somewhere around here, 6.23 kilojoules per gram. 
and then for dried fish it is 2.24 kilojoules per gram and then for dry biscuit it is 1.65 kilojoules per gram okay uh, so so draw the bars of equal width uh, it must be of equal width the bars must be separated and then of the same width and then the height must be correct uh, so you can mark it this way if the titles for the vertical axis and horizontal axis are correct with the units right kilojoules per gram and also the scale is uniform and large right uh, then you get one tick then the second tick is for three bars that are separated and of the same width uh, and they are equally separated from each other the distance uh, between each one of them is the same uh, and then the height of the bar is correct according to the reading okay or the energy value that you have calculated all right right the next question is based on the bar chart drawn state the relationship between the food sample and the energy value and then explain your answer okay so this question is usually given after uh, the bar chart of the graph is drawn uh, it's like making an analysis uh, of the graph or the bar chart and also uh, interpreting the graph or bar chart right so based on the bar chart drawn uh, state the relationship between what uh, what factors or what uh, what uh, variables okay so here the factors or variables are okay highlight uh, food sample which is your mv and uh, energy value which is your rv huh okay so first you state the relationship so it's like uh, giving a hypothesis you know linking the food sample to the energy value okay the relationship between both these uh, variables and then explain your answer so explanation of your answer could be another mark huh so f1 first which is your relationship ground nut has the highest energy value of all the food samples so take note i've mentioned the word food sample and also energy value in my statement huh? and the relationship is ground nut has the highest okay the highest energy value of all the food samples right and then to explain your answer because its lipid content is the highest right and another point to note is that groundnut contains a high lipid content and proteins whereas dried fish contains only mainly protein dry biscuit contains mainly carbohydrates okay and we know that lipids release the most energy compared to proteins and carbohydrates when burnt so since groundnut has higher the highest lipid content it will produce the most energy when it is burnt right okay so one mark for the f and then maybe one mark for the E or two marks for the E's. Huh? So uh, you notice that the F is similar to the hypothesis huh? here for this question. Okay, it's the relationship between the MV and RV, right? Then the E is the explanation. Right, next question. Based on the results of this experiment, define operationally the energy value of food. So, or it can be stated as state the operational definition for the energy value of food right so referring to our previous videos we already have come up with this acronym uh, door chem right for operational definition uh, d is for the basic definition which we may get we may uh, get from the textbook right the basic definition for energy value which is the amount of heat released when one gram of a food is burnt right and then we must modify that to the practical so our food samples are uh are ground nut dried fish and uh, dry biscuit huh? so the ground nut and fish they are the organisms you must mention them huh? uh, and then together with the food sample the biscuit right so mention these uh, three items okay and then uh r the r here rv uh, stands for rv it is the sub rv for that we use uh, here for operational definition not the main rv okay anyway the main rv is the energy value which we are trying to define right so use the sub rv now that is the final temperature of the distilled water or the increase in temperature also can be used uh, increase in temperature of the distilled water because that increase is the one that you use to calculate your energy value uh, so the energy value is determined by the increase in temperature 
okay after the item is burnt huh? after the ground nut dried fish or dry biscuit is burnt now c is for cv which is optional in this case but i put it in that means the constant variable or fixed variable which is the 20 ml of distilled water huh? so i put it in my definition a for affected by mv m is for mv huh? so mv is your type of food samples okay now so once you know all these components please put it into your combine it to form the definition for energy value of food okay you can test yourself first and now let's look at the answer right the energy value of food is the heat release when one gram of groundnut dried fish and dry biscuit are burnt and it is shown or determined by the increase in temperature of 20 ml of distilled water the energy value of food is affected by the type of food sample okay it's quite a long definition because we have three food samples to mention here huh? right let's analyze it so first of all you must write down the term uh, energy value of food as you that as is found in this question just copy the what is in the question down here the energy value of food is now our definition is heat released when one gram right of uh, here we state the organisms and the substance we use uh, ground nut dried fish and dry biscuit are burnt and it's shown by the sub rv right so by the increase in temperature of 20 ml of distilled water uh, so that is your fixed variable uh, 20 ml distilled water okay uh, so determined by the increase in temperature uh, some students may write determined by the final highest temperature of the distilled water okay i think it's also accepted right because that is the sub rv now the energy value of food is affected by the RV are affected by the MVR type of food sample. Okay, uh, there you have all the all the uh, components for your ex, uh, def, operational definition here, uh, which is door cam. Okay, so remember door cam uh, for operational definition. Next question: the diagram shows the cross section of a coconut, and the experiment is repeated with a small piece of kernel which is dried so the white part of the coconut is called the kernel uh, it's the coconut uh, flesh or meat right and this kernel is dried uh, to get rid of the water content uh, then it can burn easily also so dried uh, kernel will have higher energy value than the raw kernel uh. now predict the energy value of the dried kernel compared to dried fish uh, to the dried fish not to the groundnut or to others or to the uh, biscuit uh. so just compared to the dried fish uh, to, so take note of that and explain your answer right so our prediction is that uh, the energy value of dried kernel will be higher than that of the dried fish okay which is 2.24 kilojoules per gram uh. Uh, that is the energy value of the dried fish now why is it higher so we know that coconut uh, contains the oils called the coconut oil right it's used in cooking baking and also some people apply it on the hair uh. So this oil is what will raise the energy value of the dried kernel. Huh? So explanation, the dried kernel has a higher lipid content because of its oils huh, compared to dried fish. Okay, and this causes the kernel to release more energy when it is burnt. Alright, so this explanation is the same as for groundnut. Why groundnut has a higher uh, energy value than dried fish and dry biscuit same uh, same uh, explanation okay however if you compare dry kernel if you compare dry kernel to groundnut instead which has the higher energy value all right so from uh, sources of reference the dry kernel has higher energy value uh, uh, than the groundnut a bit more than the groundnut all right but here we are comparing with dried fish uh, okay so we are comparing the dried kernel with the dried fish according to the question, not with groundnut. Huh? Now this last question here is a question to test your skill of classifying, huh? classifying items. So A, B and C are three different food classes, highlight that, food classes with different functions as stated below. Huh? So highlight the word functions. A provides quick energy for movement, B is used to build new cells for growth and C acts as solvent for vitamins a d e and k okay so classify the following foods as, as a b and c according to their main functions huh? 
Uh, first of all, you have to identify what A, B, and C is, uh, right, based on the functions. Now, which class of food provides quick energy for movement? So first, recall back the seven classes of food, which you have studied in uh, Form 2, right? Uh, the seven classes of food are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, then vitamins, minerals, and then water and fiber or roughage, okay? Now, which one of these provides quick energy for movement? Yes, the carbohydrates. Which one uh, builds new cells for growth? Proteins, right? And lastly, which uh, food class acts as solvent for vitamins A, D, K? Yes, the lipids. Huh? So uh, we can conclude that A refers to the carbohydrates, B, proteins, and C, lipids, right? Now to classify the following foods under the uh, columns of A, B, or C, huh? okay, according to the main functions. Now, if the no table is given, you can draw the table and classify yourself. Huh? Sometimes the table is given, then you just use the table to classify the the food, uh, the foods, huh? okay, according to their functions. Okay, so let's say the table is given like this. Now, what are you going to write in the column for A, which is carbohydrates? So, which foods belong to the carbohydrates, which provide quick energy for movement? Yes, bread, potatoes, and bananas. Uh, these are all carbohydrates, mainly carbohydrates, all right? Now, which foods uh, are B? Uh, they help to build new cells for growth. Right, these are the proteins, so include uh, lean meat, egg white, and anchovies, or ikan bilis, uh, the small little fish. Then for C, which ones are the lipids that uh, act as solvents for vitamins A, D, E, K? Yes, olive oil and butter, right? Okay, so that's all for this video. I hope that you have learned something for it and revised your technique of answering uh, paper 3, uh, which you can apply to other questions. So, uh, all the best in your revision okay, for paper 3 question. So, uh, also do check out my list of compulsory, the list of compulsory experiments, which I've uploaded, uh, the video on the list of compulsory experiments, which I've uploaded recently too. Uh. So, this list of compulsory experiments, are the list that is given by the KSSM Biology Curriculum. Okay. Right. So, goodbye for now. And stay calm and study. Keep calm and study.